In Batman Arkham Knight, if you glide on top of the Elliot Memorial Hospital, you can actually find a crashed helicopter along with three dead GCPD officers scattered across the rooftop. It doesn't seem like much at first, but here's what's really weird about it. Even though the helicopter crash is extremely detailed out, it has literally no significance to the story, and Gordon never even mentions how three of his cops on patrol went missing. So what's the mystery behind it? Well, what if I told you that this helicopter crash was actually the beginning of a massive cut side mission for Arkham Knight? with the villain behind all of this being none other than Victor Zaz. Voice print failure. Access denied. Ever wondered how Bruce Wayne avoids cyber attacks like these and prevents hackers from stealing his personal info? That's because he uses NordVPN, and you should too. NordVPN is the fastest VPN on the planet, offering you the best online protection from threats, malware, censorship, and so much more. Nord uses threat protection to encrypt your internet traffic, shield you from online dangers, and hey, it even blocks all those annoying ads that just keep popping up on your screen. As a YouTuber, I'm always downloading files and digital media off the internet to use for my videos, and sometimes these can come from pretty sketchy websites. But thanks to Nord's built-in tool that inspects for malware with every download, I feel completely safe to do so. NordVPN also allows you to change your virtual location. Let's say something is banned in the area you live. Well, with Nord, you can virtually change your IP to a completely different location, allowing you to play blocked games, watch exclusive shows, and bypass restrictions. Nord is available on every major platform, and it's also completely risk-free. Try it out for 30 days, and if you don't like it, you get all your money back. You can click on this link down below to get a two-year plan plus four months free, so don't wait. Get NordVPN today to become safer online with a single click. Thank you so much to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. Alright, so let's take a look at the helicopter crash. I just want to give a huge shout out to the Shadow Raider because I wouldn't have found half this stuff without them. So first off, just by looking around, we can already tell that this was supposed to be a crime scene reconstruction, much like the Barbara Gordon one in Arkham Knight's main story. How, you ask? Well, for starters, this whole area is full of tiny details like a bunch of cash lying around, as well as Scarecrow symbol that only appears in one other area throughout the entire game. It really makes no sense for these things to be here unless they were supposed to be scannable so you could figure out how they're connected to the helicopter crash. Not only that, but the dead cops actually have defining features in their bone structures. This cop is missing a bone in his arm, and another is missing an entire piece of his skull. You know where else these unique skeletal features show up? During Pig's side mission when Batman has to set up a crime scene and use these unique features to help identify the victim. Now, this third cop doesn't have any defining features in his bone structure like the others, but what you can see with detective mode is his broken neck. Take note of how he's sitting up against the wall even though he should have died on impact from breaking his neck. It's extremely important later on. So not only do we know that this was supposed to be a scannable crime scene, but it's also obviously cut content for the game, most likely for a side mission. Now we can take a look at the helicopter itself. Momentum wise, I think that the helicopter had to have been taking off from the hospital before it crashed back down. I mean, if it was already in the air traveling at full speed, then the helicopter wouldn't have just came to a dead stop on the edge of the roof. It would have skidded a lot further. Not to mention that there's also a helicopter pad right here on top of the hospital, this being the only helicopter pad anywhere near the area. So yeah, I think we can pretty much assume that the helicopter was attempting to leave from the hospital before it crashed. But what exactly made it crash in the first place? Well, if you look at the tail, you'll notice that there's actually large cracks all along here with a big chunk of the tail completely missing. This makes it look like the tail was actually being pulled by something until it broke. If you look over here on the rooftop, you'll notice that this little pipe thing has actually been disconnected right next to where the helicopter would have been taking off from, along with a bunch of broken wires. This is really weird because everywhere else you see these things, they're always completely intact. So, what if someone had disconnected it on purpose, tied it to the back of the helicopter, and when it tried to take off, the resistance from the wires caused the tail of the helicopter to snap and break? This would have caused the helicopter to lose control, crash into this upper ledge, which explains why it's destroyed, and then spiral out of control until eventually crashing back down on the hospital rooftop. Alright, so we know how the helicopter crashed, but who was behind it? Well, now let's take a look over here by this dead cop. Here's something really interesting. A bunch of cash is all strewn about across the rooftop, which doesn't seem like much at first. But these are $20 bills, and if you count them all up, there's a total of 17 loose bills and 33 in the big stack. And guess what? That adds up to exactly $1,000, a perfect stack. Why would there be a perfect stack lying around here? 
Answer, bribe money. Now notice how this dead officer's flashlight is actually still turned on. He was clearly using it to examine something before he died. Well, what if that something was the bribe money he had just received, where he was using his flashlight to count up the cash? So somebody paid off this officer, but who? Scarecrow. If you look over here at this back wall, you'll notice Scarecrow's symbol is actually painted on. Now what's really strange about it is that this particular symbol only shows up in one other place during the entire game, that being in Panessa Studios when Scarecrow captures Robin. Of course, we can't really prove that Scarecrow was the one who paid this bribe, but just based on his symbol being here, there's really no doubt that he's connected to the crash somehow, and it just makes a lot of sense for him to be the briber. Okay, so we've got a lot of info on this crash, but there's still something major missing here, probably the most important piece of them all. Remember how I said to take note of this dead officer sitting up against the wall? Well, based on the helmet he's wearing, we can most likely assume that he was the pilot of this helicopter when it went down. If he was sitting in the far left seat of the chopper, then there's no way he could have landed in this exact position after the crash, meaning he must have dragged himself across the rooftop and propped himself up against the ledge before he died. But. Wait, this officer has a broken neck, meaning he would have died on impact. So that means he couldn't have dragged himself across the rooftop. Somebody else moved his body into this position. And who do we know that loves to pose their dead victims? Victor Zaz. Now if you don't know, Zaz was actually supposed to have a side mission in Arkham Knight, but it was unfortunately cut from the game before its release. To prove this, Zaz has cut dialogue. Death is our release. As well as an unused character profile in the game files. Well. This was that side mission. So we've got a scarecrow symbol, a bribery, three dead cops from a helicopter crash, and Zaz somehow tangled up in the middle of it. Putting all of the pieces together, here's what happened. Victor Zaz, the insane serial killer, was being treated at the Elliott Memorial Hospital for unknown reasons right up until the events of Arkham Knight. When Scarecrow threatened Gotham with fear gas and the whole evacuation began, a group of three cops were ordered to bring Zaz back to the GCPD via helicopter. They escorted him all the way up to the hospital rooftop where their helicopter was waiting for them. But wait, one of Scarecrow's men was actually able to deliver a bribe to one of the officers while the other two were busy dealing with Zaz. All the corrupt officer had to do was tie the helicopter down and uncuff Zaz so that he could jump out safely and escape into Gotham. Easy, right? So the corrupt officer tied the tail of the chopper down with these pipes and wires while the other two officers took the two front seats of the helicopter. The corrupt officer uncuffed Zaz, got into the back of the helicopter with him, and with that, everything was going to plan. Until it didn't. When the helicopter tried to take off, the pipes and wires tied to the tail began to cause resistance. However, instead of these pipes holding the helicopter down so Zaz could easily jump out as planned, they actually caused the back of the tail to snap and break, sending the helicopter spiraling out of control. While it was spiraling over the hospital, Zaz pushed the corrupt officer out of the helicopter and then jumped out himself immediately after. He was able to land safely, but the cop wasn't so lucky. The out of control helicopter then slammed into this ledge and eventually crashed back down onto the hospital rooftop, killing both officers. With all the cops dead, Zaz took this opportunity to begin posing as victims, like he so often does. So he started by dragging this officer across the rooftop and into a sitting position against the ledge. But before he could pose the other dead cops though, he heard people coming. So Zaz quickly made his escape gaining his freedom and now on the loose somewhere in Gotham City. Now obviously we're trying to recreate a story for a non-existing side mission in game with very little evidence to work with here, so I guarantee you that some of the stuff isn't 100% accurate. However, I think we have enough to prove that something along these lines did happen, even if it didn't play out exactly like this. So Zaz started here at the hospital, but where'd he go after? Well, thanks to his riddle, we know that he went directly to Founders Island, and it was here where he went on an absolute killing rampage. The riddle says that Zaz was targeting both Two Faces and Penguin's men in order to send a message to Scarecrow for excluding him from the plans. Which doesn't really align with the idea that Scarecrow paid a bribe to free Zaz. Maybe Zaz was unaware that Scarecrow was the one behind the bribe, or Scarecrow just wanted Zaz to cause more chaos out on the streets for Batman to clean up. Anyways, Zaz stayed here for a while while killing everyone he came across, at least until he noticed the bat signal light up in the sky. Again, this was at the very beginning of Arkham Knight, when you first take control of Batman. It was at this moment when Zaz decided to lie low while Batman went after Scarecrow, so he could then fight a weakened Batman later on into the night. Where was he planning on lying low? Well, thanks to the clock tower security feed, we can actually see Zaz walk past one of the cameras later on into the night, which gives us a good idea of where Zaz was going. He left Founders Island, 
traveled across the bridge to Bleak Island, and then walked along the road that leads under the clock tower. So we know Zaz's hideout is somewhere on Bleak Island. He wouldn't have left Founders Island if it was there, and it can't be on Miyagani Island either because he would have just walked back the way he came to get to the island directly. Now that we know Zaz's hideout is somewhere on Bleak Island, we can narrow it down even more. If Zaz was planning on going up to the top left of Bleak Island, then he would have taken the road leading up there rather than heading down towards the clock tower. So there's no way he was hiding anywhere up in that area. I also think that Zaz has no intention of going anywhere near the GCPD, especially considering he had just escaped his transport heading there. Okay, we narrowed it down somewhat, but that still leaves a ton of space across Bleak Island for a potential hideout though. So let's take a look at some of Zaz's unused dialogue. Just like all the other side mission characters, Zaz has specific dialogue with Batman on the Batmobile ride to GCPD after getting captured. This conversation is exactly 36 seconds long. How does this help us you might ask? Well, going off the fact that Rock City probably doesn't want their dialogue to be cut off early, all we have to do is find the exact locations where it takes at least 36 seconds to get to the GCPD from that point. Now, I went all across Bleak Island to test this, and everywhere I went took less than 36 seconds to get to the GCPD, except for one particular spot. The very back of Panessa Studios, clocking in at exactly 36 seconds to get from here to the GCPD if you follow the game's laid out directions. And what do you know, right behind this exact spot is a completely unused back room. To my knowledge, this is the only unused room in the entire game, so for it to be a part of Zaz's mission would make a ton of sense, considering that that's also the only confirmed scrapped side mission as well. Combine that with the direction Zaz was going, the fact that this room is a great location for a hideout, and how perfect everything fits with the dialogue, it just all aligned so well that I can't really see this room being meant for anything else but Zaz. Alright, so we have Zaz's entire path through the city completely laid out, and you know what that means, now it's time to figure out how exactly the side mission was supposed to play out for us as the players. So, combining all of our evidence, here's what we've got. Zaz's first appearance would still take place on the Clock Tower's camera feed when Batman's searching for Barbara, except with one slight change. You see, in the base game, nothing happens if you scan Zaz, but if his side mission didn't get cut, you would get this unique dialogue from Batman. Zaz, you'll regret coming back to Gotham. This would act as sort of an introduction for Zaz's character to let players know that yes, he is in the game, but it also wouldn't really amount to anything until later on into the story. After the player unlocks Miyagani Island, either Gordon or Alfred would then inform Batman about a GCPD helicopter crash on top of the Elliot Memorial Hospital. This would be the start of the side mission, and the player can now choose to go to the hospital at any time to investigate the crash. Upon arriving, Batman would set up a solvable crime scene much like the Barbara Gordon one in order to find out exactly what happened here. You'd start by using Batman's deep tissue scanner to identify the dead cops, then you'd move on to scanning the helicopter itself to determine exactly how it crashed, and finally, the player would scan the little details scattered around the area. The crime scene would finish with Batman discovering the bribe, figuring out that one of the victims was posed, and making a realization that Victor Zaz was the one behind all of it. Continuing on with the side quest, Batman would then attempt to find Zaz somewhere in Gotham City to bring him back into police custody. This would work similar to Arkham City's Cold Call killer side mission, but instead of tracing Zaz's phone calls, the player would use all of the dead victims Zaz killed and posed in order to track him down. The player would continue scanning posed victims until eventually gathering enough info to pinpoint Zaz's location, where you'd then discover that he's been hiding out in a back room at Panessa Studios this entire time. So for the end of the side mission, Batman would head to Zaz's hideout, and this is where the final boss fight would take place. Now after you defeat Zaz and finish the boss fight, Batman would then carry him up to the Batmobile waiting at the very very back of Vanessa Studios, and to finish the side mission, one last conversation between Batman and Zaz. Oh. Oh. No. No! I'm locking you away, Zaz. You condemn them to misery, Batman. I offer death. You're a psychotic killer. You belong behind bars. Wretched beast. Every one of them. They search for meaning where there is none to be found. What matters is we never give up. We keep fighting. A fight you will lose. Wanna bet? <laughs> 